Okay, just uh, confirm that you are able to see the slides. One of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay, so we'll start now. Uh, so what I plan to do today is a basic introduction. Okay, very basic introduction of warehouse operations. And it will be not even with the overview of what we do in this. Okay, so it's a kind of uh, getting some feel of that but it will take few weeks couple of weeks to actually understand how it looks like those who have worked probably you have an idea but those who have not worked uh, you may think that warehouse is something different okay so let's try and start so it will be an introduction and what i plan to cover uh, in the introduction is we will look at into how it fits into uh, your larger system Okay, so supply chain, uh, what is the role of warehouse? Where does it fit? What does it do? Okay, what kind of value addition it provides, for example. And then we look at warehouse has gone through several, uh, you can say that uh, change of roles. Okay, so it's becoming, it's playing more, uh, uh, I would say the larger role than what it used to play initially. Initially, it was only a storage place where you keep something and when the time comes, you pick it. But now it does more. That's what we'll try and understand. And the third bullet point is basically what are the challenges today's warehouse managers are facing. So we'll discuss a bit of that. And then a little bit of technologies on last two bullets. Okay, where we start introducing some handling units which are used in warehouse and what goes on inside warehouse, so common warehouse processes. So that's what I have planned. So I will start with the role. Okay, so role of warehousing in supply chain. For that, uh, let's look at this uh, diagram, which looks like some network, right? Supply network, supply chain network. And most of you may have used these kind of slides, actually, in your presentation or seen elsewhere. So what I have shown here uh, as several stages of transformation a product goes through as it moves through the network okay so the first level here is talks about procurement so it's basically the raw material okay raw material procurement stage so you get the raw material acquire the raw material all right the next is saying production so you get those raw material and convert into the products desired products okay now here itself, there can be network It's very simple, but you can have a supplier doing something and supplier, supplier doing something, you can create a whole network here. But I'm just giving one layer of, uh, one level of uh, upstream site uh, with respect to production, okay? So once you get this converted, then you uh, move it across distribution channel, okay? So you can have a network structure here till the final customer, okay? So this is what it shows in simple terms, all right? Uh, and I put here vendors. Okay, now uh, uh, one question I want to ask, someone can ask, okay, uh, which I put it here. So what kind of things happen to the product, right? So at this stage, it's something like a raw material, okay? And it goes through this network in broad term, what do you do with the product? Okay, which is started off here. Anybody who wants to say, so I think the question is not clear. Uh, what kind of transformation happens with the product uh, starting from the left side to the right side? Okay, you can go in any order, but uh, preferably you go in this order, production, distribution, but you simply name in some broad terms, you know, what you do with the product. Value addition. Uh... Okay, so all are value addition, but can you be very specific in what way you add value? So let's say this is raw material, okay. And let's say this is auto company, okay, production. You're making automobile here, okay. And the raw material for that, let's assume that these are the supplies, not a very raw raw material like uh, iron ore or something I'm talking about, okay. So these are kind of supplier to the steel, uh, the car makers, okay. So they may supply gear or maybe some steel sheets, okay, like that, okay. So what will you addition happens here at this stage? So moving the products closer to the customer or upstream. Okay, so one is moving. Okay. And what else? So does the farm change? 
So like, you know, I take the sheet and all those here, right? And, and here I get car, isn't it? So the value addition here is what? And only till this, what you answered it till maybe all this point here, space, all the way, okay? Anybody? So the component to car, that's what we're talking about, okay? It's a production, right? So if you add up the, let us say, you know, you add up all the uh, money you pay to the supplier to get those components, assuming that is 100% of components you're getting here. And then and all of those which go into a car, let us take one unit of car and all the cost, component cost of the car, right? Will the, some of the component car be same as car uh, price, let's say price, not even cost, because you will charge something for your car, right? Will it be more or less? Generally speaking. So when you say add value, so what value you are doing adding? Yes. Components individually are less when we add up to the finished product means. Uh, okay. As a car, they are of more value when compared individually. So basically, see, whatever you are doing here, like you want, you are adding value, that's a generic term, what we use, right? But in this case, because you are manufacturing it using this, you are using your resource, you are using your factory facilities, people, all those, right? So you want to uh, get money back, right? And then with the profit. So the value addition is the sum of this raw cost is not going to be same as this, much lower than that, because you have other costs and the profit, okay? So that's what. So this is a manufacturing adds value. That's what we're discussing. Now, what happens on this side? What, what, what value addition happens here? What activity happens or what value addition happens? So when I move my car to a customer, let us say, okay, selling it through this network. Same thing, FMCG, you can think about FMCG also, okay? Movement of goods. Hello. Yeah, I think your network, I, I can't hear. Maybe it's problem with my computer or. Hello. Yes, sir, you're audible, sir. Yeah, yeah. So I just somebody was answering. So what value addition happens in the distribution side? So what she said was transfer of goods. Transfer of goods. So basically the location or position. So basically, we are providing them convenience to buy near their homes. Okay, okay. So you're providing the convenience to them, right? So, and again, you have a cost and then you incur cost and you add to that profit and then you, that much you charge, right? And that is a kind of representation of value addition for your effort at this point, okay? All right, now the details part we will see later, but what I'm getting here right now is do the products uh, just keep moving or they do also wait somewhere in the network? So they are stored in the warehouses. Okay, okay. All right, so at least few things I can uh, get from you if you just see. So some kind of processing may happen like in manufacturing plants, right? Somewhere they may have to be stored and then they may have to be transported. So these are the generally things you will see happening across the network okay so processing storage and moving right these are general thing what we see okay and and more things happen that's what we will try and understand that's one now where all which are the places you see where storages happen uh, which is a kind of indicator of warehouses some warehouses don't store so we'll understand those also later okay so do you see some uh, warehouses near factory possibility of that I put here material warehouse. Okay, so raw material coming from supplier may have to wait, right? Before they are processed. So you can think of raw material warehouse. How about finished goods, work in progress? Do you have warehouses inside factory also? To store work in progress inventory? Uh, yes, so usually, sir, it is not, uh, like it is near the factory, if not inside. Okay, but but uh, but some factories have inside also no? store rooms. Yes, sir. If if not inside, it will be near the factory. Right. Okay. 
and then you could have a finished good inventory also you may have to hold before it move so okay, in general i am saying sometime right so once you finish immediately it may not go so you may have to store it for some time okay right then this side you can have lot of different architecture and network possible okay how you it moves from here to here okay you can think of converging from multiple factory to common place and then moving again diverging are directly going from here to consumer so many other possibilities do exist we'll discuss those okay so you can think of other type of warehouses also okay so in general uh, these are the names you will hear okay so let's just go through these names okay so in manufacturing you can have raw material work in process finished goods in general right okay let's just understand this local warehouse anybody would like to see what it is just from the name you can guess something local warehouse hmm. yeah one sorry go ahead local warehouse may be for storing raw material or finished good or wip near uh, nearby factory okay but the mostly this is uh, not used that way it's mostly near consumer okay so local warehouse okay. is very close to consumer customer now distribution center <coughs> is another term which is used so we'll see this today in detail but uh, is the name imply you may assume that uh, there will be multiple path coming out of this right is distributing so that much only you can think that there will be links to multiple uh, nodes okay so which could be final consumer intermediate or whatever but distribution center you can think of that many thing emanating from it now these two these two are confusing sometimes so i want to bring this private and public sir uh, just one doubt yeah sir in distribution center right uh, some places like amazon uh, they have also some processes like packaging and collating right. of the products right so right, right. how do we define those processes okay so all of these we will study so i am deferring that and then okay that question because that's all we are going to discuss now yes, okay sir. distribution centers are multiple types and multiple functionalities also okay so i'll we'll discuss that later so right now let's defer this question but just the term distribution uh, is what i'm introducing here private and public anybody who's aware of this private and public is it because we get confused with the ownership so this private is not nothing to do with ownership that okay this is a government uh, owned and this is a privately owned it's not that way but the private warehouse in government both can be government owned the private owned okay but the difference is private is more like a dedicated okay these are for fixed set of customer is kind of dedicated and public is shared okay so this warehouse basically uh, is used by multiple people is shared facility so that way you understand but not by ownership okay then a store or a stock room is another term we use mostly within the organization right where it could be even work in progress inventory is stored or even the consumables are stored supplies are stored right tools are stored so those type of thing stationery is are stored in the office right so those are also a form of warehouse uh, this is last one is another term is called bonded warehouse and these are very special purpose uh, warehouse and is for the customs so if you import goods they are held basically in the border um, by the custom department and once you pay your duty and then is release okay so the control is fully with the custom department it's called bonded warehouse so this much for now but we'll learn more okay okay so we'll start with first question where i said okay warehouse can be very sophisticated and we will see this some of this okay so it, there could be really really sophisticated equipment and facilities very expensive okay for example your automated storage and retrieval system srs is very expensive facilities okay and then it requires lot of resource then the question is like people think about why store things you know why not directly move things or or what is the role of warehouse other than storing okay, why do you really need warehouse do we really need warehouse because it's expense uh, and then uh, why should you own this kind of expensive facilities so that's a question uh, we want to explore so in a way what we are trying to say here is what kind of things you can beneficially be doing using warehouse or what are the roles of warehouse 
in doing different things. And that's why you see value in having warehouse. Okay, as opposed to that as a cost center. Okay, because of the uh, expensive things involved. In. Okay, so that's what we we'll do. So that's also called the purpose or value or mission. Okay, why you have warehouse? So what is that warehouse particularly doing? And there are different kind of purposes which can be attached. And, and early days, warehouse was typically viewed as a place to store inventory. So what that means is, see, warehouses, most warehouses, you will see inventory. So there's no doubt about it. But why is that inventory held? So early days, it was only that, okay, I have produced something, and but I'm not going to consume it right now. Okay, the need will happen later. It could be due to various reasons, like seasonality, economics, and all those. Okay. So when I produce now and then later on I'm going to use, what do I do? I have to store it somewhere, right? So I need warehouse, place where I store safely. Okay, that place without any spoilage and all those. So that was the role earlier assigned to warehouse. It's basically providing time value. Okay, so time you bring and time you actually use. Uh, so that is that was the how it was treated. But then the question is, is it just the time value or just warehouse as a storage facility, which only compensates for time, you know, time it comes and time it leaves. Is it just the facility which only compensates for that, which is not true now. So that's a hint I'm giving, but I want you to explore what all it can do. Okay. So broadly speaking, now warehouse is not seen as a storage place where you just bring things, store, and later on it moves when it's, there's a need for it. It does other things also. So it's more properly viewed as a switching facility. Okay. So it's a node where you switch from uh, that somewhere is arriving and doing, and you might do something in the warehouse also. Okay. And there's a purpose why you have it warehouse other than uh, storage, just, just the storage. So can you think of what, what all warehouse can It is stored, so that you will see, obviously. Okay. But is it the only reason you have where? Or there can be other reasons you have where? Sir, if there, uh, like, if in the market, the product, uh, if, if we sell damaged product, uh, huh. basically uh, not up to the right quality, huh. then it comes back. So usually so return, it comes back. Basically, you're saying return. Say, yes. The sales return part, yes. Sir. Okay, so managing the returns, you need a place where you can do it, you can process it, you can see, and then send it to the right place, right? That discarded, yes. maybe rectification or discard or whatever you do, the recycle, right? Yes. Correct. So that could be one use, return management. Yes. What else? So it can be used to, to maintain buffer stocks in order to make demand fluctuations. Okay, but why do you maintain stock in the first place? No. So, of course, when you have warehouse, you have to have a good upkeeping of the material, whatever goes with that proper management, efficient management, right? But if I don't need warehouse, I don't need any of those. Okay. But for some reason you have it. So the reason is what uh, I'm asking right now. So one reason like is uh, Diksha told, right? That it was to process returns, product returns. To Any reduce, other to uh, reduce yeah. the uh, lost sales values, uh, like can you elaborate? Like, uh, yeah, like sir, uh, uh, we we keep inventories in our warehouse to uh, to uh, cope up with the dynamics of the market according to what so sort of is that what you are saying is a buffering. So yes, so inside uh, so I have inflow. Okay, production. Let us say. And then outflows are, let's say, demand, right? Now, if demands and production are not matching for some reason, okay. So I need to, and I still want to provide customer service, good customer, good level of customer service. So I need to keep extra inventory or buffer inventory, right? So, so buffering, that's a, uh, so in inventory management, if you recall, right, why do you need inventory? So if you need inventory, then you need warehouse for that reason also, right? So all the reasons for having inventory will go with all the reasons for having warehouse. If you have inventory, you have to park it somewhere. And that's a place is warehouse. 
so inventories where uh, if you recall we talked about safety stock for example right if there are randomness fluctuations then you will have to kind of keep buffer stock for that reason other could be uh, you can even think about uh, seasonality okay so you have a seasonal seasonality in production or seasonality in demand right and and your uh, suppose your seasonality is a demand and your production is flat okay a label strategy is something like that so what do you do it there will be period when you have inventory which are not used where will it go so is uh, these are all buffer inventory we call all of these as buffer inventory yes yeah anything else packaging or repackaging uh, yeah packaging or repackaging goods like uh, big pallets are converted into uh, small uh, mm -hmm. cases and sent to the uh, distributor or customer or uh, different uh, in amazon warehouse different orders are uh, uh, okay. consolidated in one okay so so basically what what uh, you are saying is if i want to uh, paraphrase so you have a sourcing which might be coming per single product from the upstream side but the maybe customer gets a particular mix of that product okay in smaller quantities not in that bulk so that can yes. happen right uh, it could be also for logistic reason that okay one uh, picker or one uh, you can say delivery boy right uh, may combine certain set of products right so that has to be combined in that warehouse okay correct so the so you can think of product mixing here okay you are mixing different product and and then getting it out and this is not the same as what you are receiving in particular in terms of quantity and variety okay yes and also here one more thing you can think in e-commerce we talked about the value addition so uh, value added process also happens sometimes right so the product may not have uh, so it may not happen in e-commerce somewhere so product may not have let us say labels okay which is put it in the warehouse before it shipped some products uh, for international shipment and all those are uh, you may have to do pricing etc right in the warehouse rather than you know you do it early so many things you do value added activity also you do in the warehouse uh, so also yeah. like certain manufacturers can have uh, different products Huh. for different uh, areas so that switching as you said it is a switching facility correct correct so that can also be done in a warehouse yes that also so one one example could be just in time right where you let's say get things from multiple supplier a small small quantity and put them together in a truck and then move it to the plant plant where you yes, might sir. do all the supplier may drop it in the warehouse then you do the kitting and then you take it yes so this is also so i think more uh, uh, useful in a public warehouse where there, there might be multiple uh, companies using the same warehouse so that can also happen it can also be in a private warehouse also so i i have you know huge supplier base and a lot of volume so i can run it uh, that one warehouse completely rent also so the private is also rented or owned doesn't matter ownership is not linked to that but it's a exclusive use or shared use Okay. Shared is typically, you know, the cold storage and the very intensive, research intensive type of thing, and you you cannot waste a single, you know, cubic feet, for example, and so all those things could be factored for public warehouse, and not you can have our cooperative also, no, like small like a public warehouse because small farmers, small players, they can't uh, have that facility, so they basically rent, and and it's not good enough for a dedicated use, so share. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we are discovering. Okay. So I will now I think list down all what we have discussed plus few more things. Okay. And then we'll again elaborate each of these. So strategic warehousing can provide both economic benefit as well as service benefit. So here we are talking about many service benefit like you know uh, the warehouse is fitting. So combining products right and then giving it to supplier. warehouse is close to a uh, customer so that means you are getting place benefit no uh, fast uh, fulfillment so that's also service benefit economic could be economies of scale you know so you are maybe getting that type of thing so we'll see that detail but you can get some so product buffering so we discuss this there can be imbalances uh, between supply and demand so you need a 
place where your those inventory is kept. Uh, this second reason is more from the economics of scale point of view. So for in production, procurement, transportation. So basically you move everything in bulk, even though there is no requirement. Okay. So it will not be used immediately, but it has to be kept in stock for some time in the warehouse. Okay. Then this is mixing product, what we discuss, order consolidation. Okay. Uh, the storage accumulation is typically here. We are referring to the same product in larger quantity. Okay. So you generate quantity of the same product, you're making it big. Okay, which might help you in production or moving transportation. The carriers may charge you less if you are, you know, per per kg if you're moving uh, in a higher volume, like that. Okay. Uh, this one is a uh, mixing different kind of products. You're getting higher volume, but you have a small, small of multiple things. And here we will see these two, three kinds of mixing. Okay, these are variants. You can think about more variants than that. We'll discuss that. But the basic idea here is that you are making a larger load, okay, of different products. Okay, break bulk. This I will discuss especially just the opposite. <clears throat> uh, you have a large quantity and then later on you need a smaller quantity, so you have to break it. Now, where do you break? Again, you need a place, you need facility. Sometimes specialized equipment also. Okay, so that's a break bulk type. Uh, positioning product closer to customer that's also value provided by warehouse now this is not storage right necessarily but you always see products so you can always say the products are being stored but the primary motivation is not that products are being stored but you store product closer to customer value added services and postponement i will discuss that and we also talk about return and reverse logistics is generalized term you do many things so these are the kind of value addition you can see through having warehouses. Okay. And what I will do now is I'll go one by one. Okay. And then we'll just see a little bit more in detail each of these. So did you at least get, do you get a sense of this at least? Okay. So product buffering, the use of warehouse to stockpile and to handle overflow, underflow, overflow, so all those kind of things. Warehouse serves as a buffer to balance supply and demand for long-term storage. So, and there could be various reasons for this. And we have discussed earlier, I already pointed out that seasonality could be one element, which may cause variability and uh, randomness could be another element. Third element could be from customer, uh, you have a long lead time, right? So whenever customer wants, I cannot order. Basically, I can't work on make to order type of thing. So I will have to stock. Okay, make to stock type. Of thing. Okay. Or if I'm buying it, sourcing it, I'm sourcing it to inventory. And then later on, I'll be using it. So that's also comes under buffering. So this is a, in a way a traditional use also, more of the traditional use where buffering. So to maintain, this could be reason, to maintain source of supply. This is necessary if the long lead times are needed for supply of components or products, okay? Or it could also be uh, against fluctuation. And fluctuation could be random or uh, seasonality, which is not random. It's known, like we know that Diwali season, certain things will sell more. And summer, maybe the same thing will not sell, right? So that is known. It's not random that sometimes Diwali will send more and sometimes summer will send. So it's a known. So that's a seasonality. And sometimes within that also, I cannot estimate. More means how much more. Less means how much that quantity is. So there's a variability within that, which is randomness. Okay. So we maintain that. And this customer service is saying that rather than make to order, we do make to stock. Okay. So, so that is facilitated by having warehouse. So that's the product buffering. And uh, this we just discussed. So systematic variation, this we discussed. This is like a seasonality, so manage demand or production fluctuations. And one involves seasonal production and labor demand, that could be one. Okay. Or other, otherwise, uh, demand could be seasonal and production could be labor. In both cases, you need inventory. Okay and we have to store. 
and some examples could be see demand seasonality like uh, toys okay christmas time uh, some festival seasons shall more and production wise you can see seasonality in the grain right food grains other grain production so again you produce only in let us say monsoon right some type of grains uh, you can't right and then you store it and then it will be consumed throughout the year for example so you need a warehouse where you store a go downs we have right food corporation of india has many go downs where they store uh, so this is a variation part then contingency is is a randomness not systematic and in the supply side demand side we know many contingency we have seen in inventory management also that right but supply side contingency in the context of uh, warehouse and distribution you can see uh, let's say uh, variation in transportation time due to weather traffic congestion bureaucracy so you will be have checkings right everywhere okay gst taxes all those right of try right so this might because of this you cannot predict how much time it will take you know so what you may do you may actually stock uh, some of those materials so that this will this will not affect the customer service uh, production time also may be variable this is more from moving transporting and production time could be reliable unreliable operations and is unreliable suppliers so all of these may cause production time delay so lead time is also not predictable right so all of these will lead to some kind of safety stock so this is more like a safety stock right and this is not safety stock okay is uh, more like a chase strategy level strategy what we talked about okay so in the level strategy you need inventory so your production is flat okay and your demand is seasonal so when you have a high demand period now you can't produce your production level is set much lower than that peak demand rate so what you do you will build inventory when your demand is low because all of them will not be consumed so that you can better utilize your facilities right so this is buffering objective and you can see the seasonal product right so you have a agriculture product and another term they use just i'm introducing when i'm seeing this figure is they call it bulk right so bulk is this when you don't have containers basically okay you keep it like this you don't have packaging okay so that's a bulk storage okay and seasonal demand side seasonality could be a toys okay or furnitures lawn furnitures okay and then is talking about uh seasonal storage allows efficient production so that's where it helps you that your production is flat okay level so this is example of uh, buffering then uh, economies of scale we talked about uh, that we are putting it uh, you produce in bulk uh, bulk is in this case bulk is in larger quantity not a bulk like this okay Okay. So, companies store products. Uh, you produce more, even though it's not required, and then you consume it later part, right? Now, this reason here is not for buffering or variability of demand. The reason here is to gain economies of scale. Okay. So that's the difference between two and one. But in both case, there's a need for storage, then because you have inventory. so inventory is a strategy to respond and where you keep inventory is the warehouse so that's how it links so these are more like a traditional uses one and two okay so you can gain transport or production economies so i will see this discuss this later or you can have a buying so so when you buy in bulk you get again discounts okay and all of these have to be stored because they will not be consumed immediately so let's see uh, transport economies so this is just showing that because you have to pay less if you transport bigger lot so you will have a bigger container or trucks right you are supplying now you store in a warehouse because this part you have got a cheap right transport part you have reduced the cost this way to a cost but then you have to store so there is a trade off here no storage requires cost and you are saving here some but you are incurring cost 
so that's a, a gain in transportation economics uh, in production side you may buy more because there's a quantity discount but then you don't your production is not matched with this so it, they will have to be stored okay so this just talking about that all right so the one and two are more traditional use of warehouses okay now three onwards are where these are not traditional okay so they have evolved over period of time so three is saying consolidation now consolidation means now we are combining different kind of products okay so this involves use of distribution center and this is where you might use distribution center okay to gather product from different uh, sources okay its source could be warehouse or manufacturing facilities from where you are getting products and all of these are consolidated in one place because now you are mixing things and those mixed things will go to destination those destination could be another manufacturing plant or a distribution center another one or it could be directly stores consumers all this all possibilities exist but the whole idea is here mixing okay consolidate uh, this type of operation is used to assemble an order of finished products it could also be raw material we'll see the variation part here okay different ways you can combine for a different stage of supply chain okay but the whole principle uh, the primary principle remains the same okay you are mixing things for to gain different kind of advantages so we'll see that uh, the primary advantage you can uh, think of is economies and customer service let's understand this okay so uh, suppose you know i have a let me have Of sharing. Now, where are the other icons? I don't see annotate and all those. Do you see annotate? No. Yeah, here. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's take one figure. So, so I think I'll just use this place space here. So, so let's say I have multiple suppliers, uh, customers here, right? And then must have multiple suppliers here. Okay. Now, uh, for simplicity, let's assume the demand quantity to be one, one, one. Okay. And and there are maybe there are multiple customers like that, and there are ten of that. For simplicity, I'm using ten of these, and there are three products. Okay. Okay. So each of these will need 10 to supply 10, right? Is this clear? There are 10 customers, each requiring one of each of these products. This is product A, product B, and product C. Okay. So this customer needs one unit of A, one unit of B, one unit of C, and so on. Okay. So what might happen traditionally? So if you want to don't combine, then what will happen? This person has to go here, ship one unit right go here ship one unit and like that okay now this is not economical so what you do uh if you can move all the 10 and assuming these are very close located very close by so you can say you have a warehouse in mumbai okay and this is like a some part of navi mumbai thane nasik pune let us say okay so what you do is and these are maybe close to delhi okay so what you do you transport in bulk close to this place okay all 10 units in one truck rather than this and likewise okay so that's the advantage you get economics is it clear so basically you have effectively clubbed all the demand when you are moving you're not separating and then from here onward it's a close so it's not very costly and here also then you will be mixing so this requires all a b and c so you will mix one of a one of b one of c three units going here earlier there were three visits now they still there is only one visit right one trip so one trip like that you are getting three types of product in one trip earlier we are getting uh, three trips you needed okay to each of those customers so you get economies of scale you reduce the number of trips do you see this 
okay so i clear fine close any any control button to move to presentation mode because i'm not able to get into this uh, here yeah so there is a button on the top that says yeah acha okay so anyway i could manage now so this is saying that motivation are economic and customer service so allowing so it says consolidation allows to control the overhead of transportation by allowing an operation of the carrier to their capacity so we said we will move 10 units not one unit and therefore more effective amortization of the fixed transportation cost so that was an example and reducing the number of shipping and receiving operations so again now we are clubbing so a b c all three club so you have only one receiving one shipping to one customer earlier we had three shipping three receiving right and then you have a economic benefit so i hope you can see this right so you can think of variations but the idea remains the same okay so this is saying the raw material side okay so you have several uh, suppliers vendor for material a b c d okay and this is a plant which will need all this kind of raw material all right now requirement of individual raw material is small so they will not full uh, fill the entire truck so it's a less than this is ltl is a less than truck load okay so it's a less than truck load so each of these is a less than truck load and if you go all the way till plant is going to be expensive right so what you do you have a mixing center which is close to this again we are assuming here the all raw material vendors are located in close by location so you will have a supply mixing warehouse which is close to this supplier base located and you transport in less than truck load this is not economical but you are not traveling to large distance you mix it now you make a big uh, load now you are going into full truck load because you you have all the materials added together and this is going to the plant right you can just reverse this also this could be full truck load this could be half truck load so we will see those variations also possible but the idea here is supply mixing warehouse so that's the role of this warehouse you are mixing the supply consolidation of supplies from different sources that's what we are doing so consolidating small inbound load to larger outbound so this is a truck load full truck load okay another variation now we see is in the finished good item so your inbound side itself will have a finished good item and you are distributing rather than manufacturing okay so the use of distribution center to combine items in the entire product line for a customer from product to end supply will be more like these different kind of product but these are not raw material these are all finished goods okay and so let's take the figure directly okay so you have a uh, three four plants each producing a small set of products these are two products two products two and two right now they are producing in bulk okay so here this side we are moving in full truck load so this will be a larger distance on this side so distribution warehouse here will be located close to customers okay and then we will be mixing this in the required quantity for each customer and then this one will be a small carrier right okay so what i i just want to point out here that the purpose of this warehouse is not storage but you still see storage right see these product may not come at the same time as when they are needed so they will have to be stored for some time right so for example if you need a b c and there is only stock of a and b that means the supply has come only from this plant let us say or from this plant only b has come not the c you cannot supply to this right so the timing of this may not happen in the same way so you need some time where you will store the inventory and then later you will build this okay and since you are moving this in bulk this will have a less frequent supply maybe this may have a more frequent supply on this side right so you will have inventory here you will have a mismatch so don't confuse this with the mismatch what we discussed earlier there the idea was only to compensate for mismatch
but here the idea is to mix the product in the warehouse. Okay, so that's why the mission is different for both, right? And motivation is also different. Here is the transportation economies we are getting, as well as we'll get the number of trips less, better customer service that way. All right. Then uh, next uh, enhancement you can think uh, pretty much like this, except that here, if you can properly align the timing, okay, so when the customers need and when you need the supplies and you align them properly and here itself, I make uh, my packages for customer wise, even though I, I carry all of those in the same truck. So for example, uh, let's say there are four customers each requiring uh, 10 units of A. Right. So what I will do, I'll package this 10, 10 units, four packets. I'll mark it for customer one, two, three, four. All four will be put in a truck, move to this place. And here they will be separated. I will also align the timing in such a way that they don't have to wait for more than 24 hours. Okay. So that is called cross docking operations. It's a warehouse which doesn't store, doesn't intend to store. It only combines and moves fast. So this is a cross docking. So motivation here is same as this one. Okay, same motivation. There's no difference that you get transport economics. Okay. Yeah. So you can see here the cross docking combines inventory from multiple origins into a pre-specified assortment of a specified for a specific customer. Cross docking is used extensively by uh, retailers to replenish the store inventory. This done. motivation part is done here. If you directly do, then there's a less than truckload. If you do here, then you can fully truckload. You can ship this part. This time also you can because you're combining things. Both places you're combining. Here you're combining demand of multiple customers. So the blue is supplying to one, two, three arrows coming. All three add up. Then maybe it's a truckload. This was less than truck. This side also I'm combining. So if you look at these, there are four arrows coming from right, blue, yellow, green, and that. All those are combined at this place and then moving. So again, I get truckload, right? So the motivation is same as distribution center we saw this, except that now this is very efficient. You don't have to store it here, but you need a lot of IT infrastructure to coordinate things. Okay. Cross docking name is products are crossing from in, inbound dock to outbound dock. You're just crossing it. Okay. So you're not storing it. So that's a cross docking. And we will discuss this much later. We have a case study also on this. Okay, later on the cross docking. All right, then you have a break bulk. <coughs> now this break bulk is uh, not special in the sense that uh, here also you may have to break bulk. So uh, for example, the product A uh, is coming in large quantity here and they have to be divided into a smaller quantity for each customer. So you need a facility where the larger units coming has to be broken down into smaller packets or smaller, uh, maybe few pallets, this kind be multiple, right? So there should be some facility, more like that here, okay. So the warehouse in this case serves the purpose of receiving bulk shipment through economical long distance transportation from plant and breaking up these into smaller shipment for local delivery to various customers. This enable a small shipment in place for long distance, a uh, small shipment. Uh, I, I, I don't know this language, but uh, the idea you get it uh, is very similar to what we discussed here. So same idea. We're just saying that this facility, you have you should break it. Okay. Sir. Yeah. One question regarding this. Sir, yes. both uh, our postal services can be categorized as in the break bulk warehouses or okay huh. so uh, this definitely you need a breakdown facility here okay so what we are discussing here is you you have a consolidation as well as breakdown both may be happening right or the breakdown is not required because here itself you break the package in the plant itself then the breakdown is not required so that's why I say separate bullets saying breakdown, uh, break bulk, because you need that facility to uh, break it. But uh, 
it can happen that you, know, you can break it as well as your combining so right so all those functions so we are separating discussing the different objectives you can think it that way but it doesn't mean that only one thing will happen in one time over you can also have the value addition you can also have a return all those may happen in the same way okay now there is a uh, some uh, variation of break bulk break bulk again as i said break bulk can go to consolidation it can go with some other combination so there is one particular combination of break bulk or particular use of break bulk in hub and spoke concepts okay so you can think of this as hub these as spokes okay so that means you are transporting a large distance to hub and local distribution to that so that's what is hub and spoke arrangement so is basically this what we discuss plus few other things you can think okay this itself can again be distribution center so like these are the large ones and here again you may receive from multiple vendors also and then you have a break bulk so this is one type of product you are breaking there is another type of product also you are breaking combining and sending that's also possible okay so in hub and spoke concept full truck loads of products are received into dc this one we discuss that where you break it down for redistribution now in this redistribution it could be final customer or again distribution center where you combine things okay uh and it can be cross dock or it can be inventory so you break bulk and inventory and then move later or immediately you move then is like a cross dock okay fine uh, one more refinement you can think here is that uh this is not break bulking but is also centralizing so what i'm saying is directly you move then you need small small inventory right so here you have centralized all the requirements of all of these so let's assume that this side you have some product which are fast movers and some product which are slow movers so this is a slide which showing that next one okay so customer 1 2 3 will need some slow movers as well as fast movers if you have to directly ship to this you will need a larger inventory as an aggregate because you are splitting it so your forecasting error will be more larger for the same service level but you centralize it here so slow movers you centralize here and whenever the demand comes you move so you will need a smaller amount of uh, stock here okay so inventory of slow moving can be held here rather than here so that also you can achieve here okay. so that's the extra thing you can achieve apart from break bulk or consolidation so consolidation break bulk do two functions as well as uh, combine inventory which also gives you some benefit okay so that's all it says okay the next use is a, a local warehouse where uh, the warehouse the sole purpose is that i want to have a, a storage very close to customer and the advantage for doing that would be one would be that maybe visibility also okay people think that i know i am located close so i will order more because it's more reliable very quickly they can ship right so that so the market presence might benefit okay but they say there are uh, for the local okay even though it's not so obvious but some marketing literature manager feel that you is good to have a local warehouse okay it gives marketing benefit uh, local uh, where all the major advantage is a quick and small quantity shipment okay so again you see there are overlaps in all those things what we are studying the primary ideas okay so you are getting transportation benefit customer service benefit so the quickness is because you are close you get quick supply right and small shipment is possible because you are close so the cost transportation cost in that segment is not the is a small part of the total transportation cost of for the product so this part might be small cost this part might be big so small shipment you do one unit they need you are very close just go and ship it's a cost but not that much but from here you cannot even imagine that you will ship a small quantity so local warehouses will give you that advantage responsiveness and right is better that way okay so that that's a major so presence close might be seen by customers as a good thing then quick shipment is possible very quickly so order is coming 2 hours before you can ship it which is not possible when you are away 
a small shipment is also possible. So these three benefits you can put. I'm not putting a bullet point, but these are the three things coming from this slide. Okay. Next category is value added services. Okay. So that means the supplier uh, is giving you product and you are doing something on top of that. Okay. This could be in the form of just the labeling, just the gift wrapping, right? In e-commerce we do, right? Gift wrapping and they have an extra charge for that also. Correct. And sometimes you do pricing, like some products, uh, the prices are not kind of steady. And uh, so you want to delay the pricing decision. So you can do it here just before the order comes. At that time you'll ch check what is the price and then put the tag based on that. Okay. So the pricing can be done. Uh, Sometimes the finishing can be done, small finishing, like you know, that color. Like if you think about Asian paints. Anybody is aware of Asian paints operation? The variety yeah. part? Yes, Nancy. So they uh, they usually uh, um, send. Uh, I can say uh, solid uh, special colors and color combination is done at yeah. warehouses. Right. So basically, you have a plain form for a long time, and only when the order comes, you put the color okay in that paint and so it can be customized to the color so you can imagine that there are maybe hundreds of color possible if you had to keep inventory of each of those hundred how much inventory you end up how much a mismatch of demand will happen right as opposed to that you you have a common base right which can go into any of the colors and you are only customizing the colors at the warehouse just when the order comes Okay, they do it at the dealer's end and the, okay, the color part. So that's the advantage you can get. So that's a value added service. So increasingly warehouses are required to undertake some value added processing. This could be in the form of pricing, labeling, kitting, like this. Kitting is here, it could also be in manufacturing, right? Like a JIT. So it just in the assembly line, they send the kits, which are done in the warehouse. Uh, like final assembly is done, like assembly of computer unit from the constituent components, that is done later. Invoicing returns, this kind of thing can be done, value added services. And all of these has a common base, which is postponement. Okay, that's the principle. So in supply chain, you will be learning this, that late customization or postponement as a strategy in supply chain, which gives a lot of benefits in terms of inventory, in terms of customer service, in terms of cost. So that is what is uh, kind of enabled in this warehouse. Okay, so that is the primary principle you're using here that delay things. You don't do it at the manufacturer side or don't do it earlier, do it very late in the warehouse. So those go, go to that. So <clears throat> he's saying in general, the development is aligned and suggested by idea of late product customization or postponement increasingly product is <coughs> kept in vanilla form that means common right until the last moment <coughs> and then altered according to customer demand so this asian paint is one example uh, another one i have written here so you can read it uh, i'm just having water okay, in the meantime <clears throat> so all right so basically you're combining late so you're not pre-packaging but you're combining as per the order so any combination it can go some people may skip some of the items some may have additional items so you can get those later so this is e-commerce type of idea also so the use of warehouse is a final step deferment so you defer things till warehouse or postponement until customer places an order for a specific quantity and a specific type of product. This is not me. Here is the part. So here you can make in bulk because those will go in all different products, right? But if you have to uh, kind of designate a particular color at the beginning, then you cannot make in bulk. You'll make in a small quantity. So you don't get economies that way. So postponement is also uh, 
strategy of mass customization. So I'm just introducing different terms, right? But the idea we have I have already given. Putting the finishing touches on a nearly finished product, it allows you to reduce your inventory volume of finished product while still providing high level of customer service with the less level of inventory. It also allows you to keep a lower inventory in generic form in work in process. So what this says is uh, your inventory level overall in all the stages will reduce because those are common going into common, right? And whenever we aggregate things, you need less inventory. So the last stage, everything is aggregated. It's work in progress and even it till the warehouse. After that, you are separating it, customizing it, right? So you need less inventory. All right. So processing and postponement provide two economic benefits. One is risk is minimized. And that's another thing I talked about product mismatch. So if you have customized early in the uh, early part in the value chain, your uh, customization, then uh, that you kind of involve a lot of risk with the product. So some will sell more, some will sell less. So you'll have a shortage, some will have excess. Okay. But if you delay it, you have a better estimate of demand because you are making the estimates very close to the demand, right? Time of demand. So you'll get the benefit there. Second is uh, you need the less amount of inventory, okay, or the same amount of customer service, same level. Of. Okay, the last kind of use or value addition, last type is provided by warehouse can be reverse logistics. And we saw the return part, right? We discussed that return money mill. <clears throat> this could also be uh, reverse logistics is nothing but forward logistics is what that we have a supplier manufacturing distributing going to customer reverses is coming from the customer and going back going back sometime all the way till production plant sometime to the distribution stage so somewhere in middle also possible okay return management so you can recall product which either did not sell or which were defective okay so you need a warehouse to do that Remanufacturing because that requires different kind of resources. Remanufacturing and repair. Now product is already in service. They were sold. Okay. Uh, but now you want to recycle. So some part can be reused or you can refurbish. You can bring it back to the original condition and do. So it may go to the plant. You want to retrieve the material used in that. Right. So that you can do. So you need a separate warehouse to do that. Uh, this is remarketing, selling the used equipment. So you need different kind of, you don't mix that with the, your normal product. Recycling, disposal, all of these might require facilities. Okay. It is now common for a specialist warehouse operation to be used to recover the value left in return by correcting issues and putting the product back on sale at different stages of supply chain. You can recall it and recycle it. So I hope now it's clear that the purpose of having warehouse is not just the storage or time value or just buffering, but there are multiple kind of uses. So that is the point I want to convey through these slides. Okay. Any question till this point? Okay, not. So if you put together the motivation for having warehouses in many different ways, like you know what we discussed, all of this. You can club into uh, three categories. You might get economies of scale in manufacturing, transportation, procurement. Okay. Are uh, all consolidating here. Okay. Multiple businesses. Inventory management, you get benefits if you are using postponement strategy, delayed customization, which is similar, same actually. Uh, visual inventory control is possible in the warehouse, seasonal inventory, right? and inventory. So there are many inventory management benefits through the warehouses. In some of those warehouses, what we discussed, different kind of warehouses, okay? Customer service benefit, you can think. Response time, local warehouse, for example. Value added services can be provided. Consolidation in DCs. Kitting and that also can be done in DCs and value added warehouses. 
international order preparation might require different kind of <coughs> all different kind of uh, you can say approaches for example your pricing will be different tax structure will be different right your measurement might be different uh, if it is electronic item you can think of your voltage right power supply is different computers right so all of those need uh, different processing all together which can be done then it has to be sent to custom labeling is different right so all those can be achieved return and reverse logistics can be managed and this is one more uh, term which has come pack and hold so sometimes uh, just think an example okay so let's say you're coming to college and on the way you have uh, maybe some place uh, you ordered and you didn't want to spend time and know that uh, uh, sitting there uh, standing there in the shop till they complete the order so what you do you go and say okay a shopkeeper you can say you know you just uh, i want these 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 just uh, keep this ready when i come back i'll collect so it's almost like that here pack and hold so even in commercial organization you might say keep things ready and i will need in such and such time i'll collect it later so it's like that uh, marketing and presence in the local warehouse it might help you better uh, uh, you can say recognition of your product by having local warehouse so these are some advantages okay uh, now all of these kind of warehouses advantages did not happen from the early days when the warehouses came into play right they have evolved okay so this is a kind of evolution you can trace major steps so in 50s and 60s the motivation of only storage time will be basically okay for buffering reason it could be accumulation reason also okay mass production so you produce in bulk for economies of scale you need warehouse put it there okay so it's more of the first two reasons what we get you know buffering and economies of scale then as you move on distribution center so here you try to combine things from multiple sources and this was required particularly in jit when you are getting small quantities from multiple vendors going into manufacturing plants so order assemblies from the raw material there okay and then you can extend that to distribution side also order assembly then another development is value added services so you do certain things later okay it's not just the assembling of different product but you do certain things there value added services so this is called logistic center which provide this kind of services all three okay and then the mass customization delayed thing required that some of the steps which would normally be done in manufacturing plant would be done in warehouse so this is manufacturing assembly which is added here okay or even in case of computer right or asian paint example so okay you can think of that so you do four types of things four types of purposes okay reasons fulfillment so this is the evolution of uh, warehouse evolution of so in 50s it was storage 70s to 90s it was kind of assembly mixing and then we have the value added and then we also require manufacturing assembly so storage though is still important but it's not the primary driver okay in all of this so warehouses increasingly becoming value added centers in the different forms of values which we discuss okay rather than just storage so the switching facility that's why we call that okay so the definition of warehousing is nothing but i'm just kind of collating everything here so a designated place where goods are stored to balance demand and supply right this buffering so service customer in batch matter way so again buffering you can think Com uh, then consolidated this upstream flow distribute and distribute it to downstream flow as per requirement combining things to do last mile value addition right such as packaging kitting etc and to reduce last mile distribution cost like local warehouse so all of this is just clumped that's all okay then we come to the next bullet point the challenges what the manager uh, warehouse manager faces now which was not there earlier 
okay, in 50s and 60s. So uh, typically the scenario is like this now, you have to deal with smaller transactions. Now a smaller transaction, what are the implications? Why it is difficult? Because you have to make more work, right? More packages, right? Uh, more receiving, more shipping. So you have to deal with more work. That leads to more work. Now. Handle uh, and store more SKUs. Again, variety. Again, that adds to more work. More product and service customization adds to more work. International order adds to more work. So basically, more work and more carefully. Okay. More value added services, more returns, higher security. So uh, all of this will tell you that your quality level requirement and quantity of work, quality of work, skill of work, everything has increased now. All of this is increasing over period. But what happens to resources? Uh, you get less time because your manpower, although basically there's a tendency to reduce and very quickly you have to shift. So the customers don't have that much of time. Okay, you have to process quickly. Margin of error is less. They don't tolerate more. Now this may or may not be true, but it says young and skilled laborers is still in shortage. And those who have visited warehouse, at least in our country, many operations are very still in rudimentary. Laborers are highly unskilled who handle this. Okay. Uh, warehouse management capability you may not have in all the uh, warehouses. Okay. So some of these may not be true, but at least first two bullet points are true. So that's a challenge. Your requirements are increasing and resources are shrinking. Okay, then we're moving to the next uh, item, which is uh, talking a little bit on handling units. Okay, the, again, we are introducing to the terminology. I'll spend more time later, so it will be repeated. Okay, it's not that today, what we see, we will not see again. Okay, it will be reinforced. So as you move in the supply chain, initially, uh, let's say manufacturing plant and all those, the quantity or packaging is uh, bigger, okay? So bulk, you handle the bulk. And as you move, final consumer may use only one or two pieces, right? When the product is completed and moved and done. So in general, you are dealing with a larger quantity at the beginning of the supply chain and a smaller quantity towards end of supply chain, okay? What are different units? Pallets, so bigger units. So a product is generally handled in smaller units as you move. So the packaging will be accordingly done. Okay. SKUs, what is SKU? Anybody would like to answer? What is SKU? So stock keeping units. Yes, but what does that mean? This is the basic, uh, how many types of uh, the material warehouse have? Okay. So uh, you can think of uh, SKU as a product type for uh, storage and handling purposes. Okay. So in the same product I have in the third slide, I go to that first so that I'm covering that. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at this slide first. Okay. So SKU. So you look at the same flight. So the product is same, cola, right? Now there's a package of two, uh, there's the individual units and there's a package of, uh, I look like six. Okay, half a dozen. Now all of these will be called different SKUs. This is one type of SKU, second and third. So two liter bottle is, this is one SKU, this is another SKU, and this is another SKU. So these are all different SKUs. Why it is, so based on the need, you will have a different kind of packaging, right? So we are selling this one unit to some type of customer, this to another type, this to another type. But you cannot just call everything Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, because for accounting purposes, then you will have a problem, right? So you will call it the SKU, some number, and what is the product type, which is a cola, and quantity, which is two units or one unit, like that. So your accounting is done properly. Okay. So that's the idea of SKU. So SKU is not reflecting a unique type of product, but it's a unique type of packaging. Okay. So that part, I think you know. Item is cola. All of these, all the three SKUs have item is cola. Okay. But SKUs are different. So I hope this is clear. 
sir so now, i have a doubt regarding sku uh, yeah like till now i have i thought that sku something different sizes of products like uh, uh, 500 grams and oh, okay that will also be a different sku so their product is also different and packaging is also different so suppose cola is also half a liter okay it comes in 1 liter and half a liter so these are two different items definitely two different items will have to be different sku but okay. with the same item you can have multiple types of sku is it clear now yeah so that item itself will be different half a liter and this one they are two different items okay so we have a pallet and then pallet one layer of that is called tier or layer you have a four layers here within that you have a unit here which could be carton these are like a four cartons right and if you open the carton you can have a inner pack okay multiple of that and each inner pack we have a multiple pieces so you can create multiple type of sqs one this type this type okay packaging also and they are successively broken down as you move so pallet is nothing but you have a base we'll see that later also and the same type of products in the form of cartons are all those are stacked here you can have a different type of product stacked so you can create mixed unit way so this one will have a different kind of products okay not same type carton you all know right this is a carton so i'm not going to go into that inner pack if you open a carton you can arrange things like this also inner pack again because it's much easier later that's idea so you can sell this just open it sell rather than single one you are combining in the warehouse tote is a uh, again the same size more or less like a carton but it's a reusable because it's a plastic made okay and it has it can be used for different purposes also than this right some of this carton can do and uh, carton cannot do which case can do okay uh, uh, case represents an item which is palletizable for example carton is a case but case is a generic one okay it can be conveyed it can be palletized conveyed means you can put in conveyor you can go right very easily amenable this can be also conveyed if you put things there okay and this we have discussed items and skus okay order this is like amazon all of you may have placed order in amazon right you get a sheet invoice sheet right the kind of detail you see that's a referring to the order you place an order with amazon usually they will give you your address right invoice number they will have a list of item which you have ordered uh, here like that okay these are the products quantity ship price etc so you get very similar like that now each of these are called line item in warehouse parlor so like this classic automobile volume 2 piece for 17 that's one line item selling a sport for young and old that's another line item these are line items in each line what you pick right and this is order sheet okay uh, the last thing we will discuss today a little bit on what goes on inside warehouse okay so what i show here is this let's say the figure okay inside so typically what happens is this is your warehouse okay it's a schematic okay don't just understand like it's a, it's a picture of that so receiving so goods will come to the warehouse in trucks or some other kind of uh, vehicles right receiving that's the first step you do inside warehouse or you can say interface of the warehouse basically you check what was the invoice what were the products all those unload right so receiving is basically it is as per the list you check in quantity quality all of those right and then you have to arrange schedule the truck each of this process we are going to learn in detail so don't worry about that okay and then once the products are received then they have to be stored somewhere so this is a storage and there is a operation called put away that is nothing but from here to storage area you move things that's a put away now there could be reserve storage where products are kept and later are moved for picking when the demand comes or there could be one common area where you keep things and you pick from the same area so here i'm assuming that this is where you keep things and later on you move to the area here like so the cases are kept here this is the pallet these are the cases 
and these are the broken items are kept here and when the demand comes and you might directly store some of this here some of this here some of this here that's also possible we do that and when the demand comes you kind of pick them accumulate sort pack and sometime value added activity also you perform then it goes for shipping and then again you may have truck or something which will ship so that's a broadly very common sense intuitive these are the steps what happens in the warehouse Okay. it is reserve storage the temporary storage yes it's a temporary you don't pick from there yes it, so, it, some some items slow movers will stay for a long time also okay so and but, sir, can staging area be considered as a reserve storage which one staging area as in sometime no, no, in no, the no, stage no, the staging will be here after receiving uh, this way okay. okay sir so we will discuss those details so right now uh, uh, okay so even if you don't get it Uh, is fine okay. because each of these we are going to take that will be the entire course will be around this only. okay so receiving for now to understand it uh, consumes about 10% of the operating cost and is order, orderly receipt of all material coming to the warehouse providing the assurance for quantity and quality you check whatever in the list you have it and then you goes to uh, basically then you decide where it will go put away is actually moving okay things from here to storage area sometime directly to picking area also you might move okay that's 15% of the cost storage is where it stays for some time right then this is outbound so once you have stored now you have the item now when the customer demand come that originates uh, processing you process the order to check what are the items required whether those items are available and then you create pick list so that those items will be picked once those items are pick list is done the mover will go pick all those items okay and then bring it to for consolidation so order picking is a large cost 55% of operating labor of just for intuition uh, the item you receive here and this side you no know, the quantity is usually smaller this side so you pallet load but this side might be smaller so you make multiple trips here here you make less number of trips okay that's why the cost is more for the picking not for the put away and within picking there can be break up traveling searching extracting documentation let's not go into detail just see it is what involved so you go to the place search for the item extract it and then bring it back document what you have got okay and then collect uh, consolidate and checking packing shipping and others these are the other outbound processes so this is what happens broadly speaking right details we will see as i said right so the outline of the course now i will discuss so the role of warehouses is undergoing a dramatic change we discuss that that's why i didn't want to introduce this first we have seen that so uh, it can be a source of competitive advantage by way of providing value added services consolidated delayed differentiation etc so it's important to choose the right kind of design right kind of process right kind of equipment and measures so all of this we are going to discuss in this course okay so role of warehousing this we discuss warehouse processes i am only named right now just assume that we have in, only introduced the names right now we will move on to this now from next time equipments and systems and i want you to get familiarized those who have seen warehouse is fine but i will show you lot of videos so you get familiarized uh, familiarized with equipment and systems then we will do the profiling this is like a data analytics okay where all the activity profiling then we'll come to the design okay unit look warehouse design forward reserve design so these are the design and in between we look into all the processes in detail principles used world class practices etc okay uh, this you just read this is true so don't copy anywhere okay uh, from your groups uh, from other groups or from other sources so that's implicit books now there is one book which is available so just search this in network internet you will find this is a free okay and we will be giving notes right so and lot of assignments and some assignment and cases that's where your learning will happen so uh, in terms of grading uh, you will be working on assignment cases in groups so i want you to form groups unless you 
want me to do okay except that a phd student can form one group all phd students just for the convenience okay and mbas can form uh, groups uh, size 4 or 5 okay for mbas phds i think there are only three students registered so you all can form one group okay and exceptions are possible you want to less size sometime for some reason then you let me know okay. uh, uh, there could be mid term or combination of quiz and mid term okay but mid term will be there in term will be there there can be some quizzes also okay possible one or two quizzes okay. uh and uh, i will announce so this will not be unannounced this will be announced quizzes and mid terms okay end term so these are the weightages uh this part we have already seen the first pillar from next time we are going to discuss the warehousing equipment now there will be one assignment it will use some data from the case okay but this is a very really small assignment the first one then this is the analytics data analytics for warehousing we call it warehouse activity processing uh, i have a case from data from the retail which you will be giving you the assignment and you will be carrying out this on your own once we discuss the uh, basic idea of this so you will do this assignment you will learn this hands on basically is actual data hands on okay and then we will look into all the processes okay from receiving uh storage picking all of these and we'll discuss uh what are the practices what are the principles and i will have again a case on cross docking and one assignment on storage system design will be then uh some quantitative methods this will involve some quantitative okay this part design of unit load so it won't be excessive but uh, it will have calculations here okay more calculations design of forward reserve and we'll do benchmarking and warehouse performance measure later then we have a case of indian railways here okay which is on the design of this uh, this and then end term so this is how uh, we plan to do this case so any question before we close today's lecture you can ask a question regarding a friday class uh, i have made uh, uh, friday class uh, one option is uh, i think i am recording this video right so you can watch the half an hour last half an hour on your own uh, if that is okay so that way it will not disrupt anybody else is it okay because you have a class they have class at 10 o'clock and this class goes till 10:30 so you can leave at 10 and then you can watch the remaining part uh, in the video and if you still have question you can ask you can discuss uh, separately not in the class we can fix a time and you can discuss if you have any question on that only thing i'll assume that there won't be test and all or which will require your presence okay online presence uh, i hope that's fine okay sir okay yeah okay so we start here now uh, and then we'll continue right next time from the equipment all right so i think i should close the recording first where is the recording i push